What's up YouTube, this is 4th Star TCG, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over some of the new decks in the standard rotation for 2016-17, uh, what I think are going to be the best decks in this format, uh, what I think you guys should play in the standard in this uh, new standard format, what the threats are, basically just a nice overview of the standard rotation, what it brings, what... Uh, what decks are leaving, completely leaving, what decks need a couple tweaks, and what decks are just completely unchanged by this, uh, by this standard format rotation. Uh, yeah, and also going over what I think you guys should play, uh, depending on your situation, what you like to play, what your financial situation is, uh, what decks you can afford, and uh, just give you the best decks that I think you guys can play overall for this standard format. So first off, the decks that are leaving the format absolutely completely, uh, stuff like Night March. Night March is gone uh, 100%. Uh, the loss of Battle Compressor and all of the Night Marchers from Phantom Forces uh, is really, is just gonna kill it. Uh, you can still play it in Expanded, but this deck is no longer around in Standard. You will never face Night March. Uh, so you can forget about that. You can go back to your EX heavy decks. You don't need a tech for Night March with Jirachi and stuff anymore. Uh, stuff like Genesect decks, uh, really any steel deck that runs Bronzong is also rotated out because the Metal Lynx Bronzong in Phantom Forces is gone. So stuff like Genesect is going to be a lot harder to power up. You're going to have to use max, like four counts of Max Lixer if you still want to play this deck. Um, yeah, and it's 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 very difficult to it's very difficult to play this kind of a uh, this kind of a deck in the standard uh, in the next standard rotation. So really, any steel decks that relied on Metal Link's Bronzong, those are also uh, pretty much gone. Um, stuff like let's see, what else has rotated? Uh, stuff like and this is uh, this is a new Primal Groudon deck list that I made, but fighting decks. Uh, they do lose a lot of support, they lose, um, I have four gold trainers mail now, so we will up that up to four. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is a standard deck list that I made uh, for the next rotation, but uh, really fighting decks, they lose a lot of support, they lose Focus Sash, they lose Fighting Stadium, they lose Karina. Uh, so stuff like Zygarde is going to be much more difficult to play. Um, I think Primal Groudon is one of the few fighting uh, Pokemon that really survives the rotation. The reason being you have Carbink to power it up and you really don't need stuff like Fighting Stadium uh, and Focus Sash because you've got 240 HP. Rarely anything knocking you out in one shot, uh, save probably Mega Ray and that's with a full bench. Uh, and stuff like really, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Uh, the need you you don't need fighting stadium. You're hitting 200 plus with strong energy. Uh, that's it's it's really not needed. Um, so primal groudon really does survive this rotation. Uh, I think primal groudon <clears throat> is a great deck to play in the next format. Uh, I did a video on that. <clears throat> if you would like to go check that out, feel free. Uh, it's in the link will probably be in the description to my Pokemon TCG online playlist. So Groudon really uh, survives the rotation, um, and then I mean, there's there's a lot of the their big card losses uh, that that come from the rotation. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there are big card losses that come from the rotation. Uh, the main loss is Battle Compressor. Battle Compressor sped up so many decks, made it so much easier to work. Uh, really just a great, great card. Uh, in terms of supporters, we don't really lose much because stuff like Lysander has been reprinted, stuff like Professor Sycamore has been reprinted. Uh, we lose Xerosic and uh, that's really important because we really have no form of trainer based tool removal as we've also lost Startling Megaphone. So stuff like Garbodor is going to be very big in the next format. Entei with like Fighting Fury Belt, throw two Fighting Fury Belts on that thing and it's a massive uh, attacker now. Um, so stuff like that, Garbodor is going to be very big because there's no form of trainer based tool removal once Xerosic and uh, 
and startling megaphone and they have rotated so we have we have nothing for that now um, Let's see, important cards like Dimension Valley that a lot of Psychic decks use. Stuff like Mega Mewtwo wouldn't really use Dimension Valley uh, because <clears throat> because it's just you want to add more energy, you don't want to attack with less energy. Uh, and usually your Psychic Infinity, you won't be trying to Psychic Infinity with just one energy on your Mewtwo. Um, let's see, other important stuff that's rotating out, a lot of fire support. Blacksmith is gone, uh, stuff like Fiery Torch, uh, the Intimidating Main Pyro, so a lot of Pyro Break decks. Where's my Pyro Break deck right here? Uh, this is, you're losing basically all the Pyro that I played here that made this deck really good. Uh, or not really good, but just a lot of uh, a lot of fun to play. The Intimidating Main Pyro is gone, uh, the Flare Command Pyro is gone, uh, that was from Phantom Forces. So you're not really going to be able to make a pyro break deck anymore I mean you probably could but it's not going to do very well uh, unfortunately yeah stuff like protection cube rotating muscle band rotating we have fighting fury belt so that's not a huge problem uh, but the rotation really does hit a lot of decks hard uh, there's some decks that are completely untouched by this uh, stuff like where's my mega ray deck come on where'd it go Oh, it's in here somewhere. All decks. Okay, there we go. Mega Ray. Do I have anything in here that's rotated? I don't think so. No, oh, yeah. I shouldn't. <clears throat> oh, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, it was in my expanded, probably. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why nothing was showing up. Okay, uh, so Mega Ray really loses nothing in this rotation. I mean, I will be doing a video on this Mega Ray deck list, but I mean, you've got your Rayquazas, you got your Shamans, you got whatever tech you want to run, Altaria or Ninetales, you got your Hoopas, nothing rotates out of this. Maybe the only thing that rotates out is Battle Compressor, which makes it a little harder to, uh, a little harder to find your Mega Turbos and your one of supporters, but you've got four Ultra Balls, you've got four Sycamores in order to get those into the discard pile for your VS Seeker and your Mega Turbo, so it's really, and you've got Puzzle of Time to bring them back if you absolutely have to. So Mega Ray loses absolutely nothing, Mega Ray going to be a huge threat in the next format, I believe. Um, it's easy to count, it's easy to tech for Mega Ray. Uh, you just run a parallel city or something, but Mega Ray has ways of getting around that. You play four Skyfield plus four uh, Puzzle of Time, so even if they get rid of your Skyfield, even if you have to discard your Skyfield, you can get them back. Uh, playing f more than four stadiums in one game is crazy. Uh, more, for, more than four of the same stadium. Uh, you've got Pokemon Ranger to get you out of stuff like... Giratina Lock, which is also going to be big, uh, either Xerneas Break Giratina or Darkrai Giratina, stuff like <clears throat> stuff like that's going to be a uh, going to be a big hassle if you're trying to if you're trying to uh, tech <laughs> if you're trying to play Mega Ray. But Pokemon Ranger, that's also going to help you out with that. Uh, this is just my initial deck list right here. Uh, might make a couple tweaks. Stuff like Two Hex Maniac would also be good to get around. Stuff like Giratina if they're not playing Garbodor, or if they, uh, or if they just uh, if they're not playing Garbodor, or they just choose not to get it in play uh, because you're a Mega and you can't attack them. But uh, yeah, I think you. It's kind of this Mega Raid deck list is really straightforward. I play a three-three line. Three Shaman EX, uh, you can do four. If you're going to a tournament, I'd play four, but uh, three works fine for me in this deck list. Uh, Shamans are so expensive on TCGO right now, I really don't want to shell out, what is it, like 40 something packs um, in order to get one Shaman EX that I would only use for this deck. Uh, but it's it, three is a perfectly fine count of this. Uh, and then whatever tech you want to run, this is really interchangeable. Do you want to run a 1-1 Altaria line just to make sure that uh, if you're facing the weakness matchup, you can you can uh, tech for that. Uh, weakness policy, you don't really want to run because you run your spirit links. Uh, or do you want to run nine tails? You think that stuff like Giratina is going to be uh, more important. You want to lock them out of those parallel cities. Make sure your bench stays at eight at all times. 
then you can use that. Ninetales make them work a lot harder to discard that stadium. They have to hex, they have to Lysander knock it out, something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically how Mega Ray works. Uh, stuff like Mega Sceptile is going to need a couple tweaks. Uh, I believe this is... yeah. The, yeah, it's expanded. Uh, so I need to tweak this deck a little bit, but Mega Sceptile, a very good deck for the next format. Uh, it's it's going to be played differently, uh, I think, because you lose stuff like Super Scoop Up. I believe this is an exact copy of uh, Professor K's deck list. You lose Super Scoop Up, you lose AZ, you lose a lot of the healing stuff that made this deck uh, work really well. But everything else besides Super Scoop Up and AZ, you keep. You keep your Sceptile line, you keep your Ariados, you keep your Rizion and your Hoopa. Uh, all the ways to get energy into your hand you keep. Uh, you still got your Sycamore, you still got your Lysander, your Fisherman, your Stadiums, everything all works out. So you still have all that. So Mega Sceptile could be a very good deck in the next format, especially if uh, stuff. Uh, Stuff like Greninja becomes big because Theta Stop, they can't giant water shuriken you. Uh, so they're stuck. I mean, you just destroy Greninja uh, with Mega Sceptile. There's really nothing they can do. Uh, yeah, stuff like Gardevoir, uh, the brand new Gardevoir from Steam Siege, that's going to be very good. This loses nothing. I mean, let's be honest, maybe a Battle Compressor would have helped it out, but this deck also loses nothing in the uh, next rotation. Going to be a very strong. Uh, what I changed, uh, but yeah, I'll just discard that. Um, yeah, so like I said, whatever deck you want to play. So I think I've fairly given a good overview of what decks are going to be strong. Maybe Mewtwo is also going to be very strong. I have not built that deck yet, unfortunately, but I probably will in the near future, uh, given that it's such a good deck for the 2016-17 standard rotation. Um, what deck you want to play really? depends on how you like to play. Do you want to play explosively and do you have a lot of resources to get those 3-4 Shaman EX, get those Hoopas, uh, get stuff like your 4 copies of Puzzle of Time and your... I mean there's really not a lot of expensive stuff in this deck besides the Shaman. Uh, Mega Ray is fairly expensive, uh, Hoopas fairly expensive uh, especially once you're buying like three mega rays but this mega ray is a very expensive deck list if you don't have the resources either on tcgo or in real life to get something like uh to get something like mega ray going something like rainbow road that's a very good sort of budget option that you can get the really expensive only expensive cards you need are stuff like Volcanion EX and I run shamans in this deck list because it makes it work better uh, but you can replace that with either Octillery uh, you can run a 2-2 Octillery line because it's another type uh, yes Volcanion accounts for your water type but uh, and shaman works best in this deck list but it's not a deck that you have to like that has to run shaman i mean if you're at a tournament probably if you're just playing online or with your friends for fun you can sub this out for a 2-2 octillery line maybe cut a few cards here and there uh but rainbow road i think is going to be i've played a couple games with this deck list i will be doing a video on it later but it's very good it's very uh it's able to withstand a lot it doesn't really get hurt too much by garbador uh, because you're really you only use your shamans for abilities and hopefully you'll get those down uh, you'll get those down quickly uh, it's not really affected by stuff like Garbodor which is going to be huge in the next format because uh, there's no form of tool removal um, yeah so just stuff like this stuff like Rainbow Road a very inexpensive option to run besides the shamans I mean shaman is just a meta standard in every deck if you want to invest in shamans get it now uh, Greninja Break is also another very good deck for the next format. It's probably going to be needing some tweaks. I really think the only tweak, what, you take out Battle Compressor and you take out Startling Megaphone and maybe add another copy of Level Ball or uh, 
I don't know, maybe a Lysander or something. That's something I felt that this deck list was missing. Uh, and of course it's missing and it doesn't have it. But uh, yeah, Greninja Break going to be a very good deck for the next format. I would play it with Talonflame. <laughs> I honestly would. Uh, it just makes everything so much easier. Uh, maybe add an Ultra Ball or two to be able to get out of those Talonflame if you have them. But yeah, I mean... Greninja Break going to be very good. You do have to watch out for that Garbodor ability lock, and that's why I'd add a Lysander or two in this deck list, just so that you can Lysander that out and you can uh, get rid of it uh, before anything gets out of hand. Um, Greninja Break, also a very cheap deck list, to be honest. Uh, these, there's really the most expensive card you're going to be getting is Greninja Break, and that's maybe $10 to $15. Uh, Talon Flames, not very expensive. Froakies, Frogadiers, Greninjas, not very expensive. Uh, everything here is not expensive unless you really want to bling out your deck and buy four full art copies of Professor Sycamore. Uh, but stuff like this, really not expensive. Uh, Greninja Break, a great deck to run for the next format. A good budget deck list that uh, is very competitive at a high level. Uh, Stuff like Mega Steelix, that's also going to be fairly competitive, I feel. I feel like the correct build for it hasn't been found yet, to be honest. I mean, this build did not really work well for me, uh, but we'll see what people come up with. Uh, I think, especially with Special Charge, that is a great deck to play. Uh, Mega Mewtwo, very, very, very big in the next format. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be making it very difficult for stuff like Primal Groudon to go around and uh, and get stuff done. But I face off against Mega Mewtwo with my Primal Groudon deck builds, and it has worked out. Stuff like Yen Mega Break also really loses nothing. You still have Revitalizer, you still have Forest of Giant Plants and Bursting Balloon, which are very key cards in the uh, in the Yen Mega Break lineup. But also, Garbodor is very going to be very big, so you're going to have to run Yen Mega Break alongside something like Primal Groudon, alongside something like Raichu, uh, in order to counter that Garbodor. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I just wanted to make a note for you guys, if I, because I've been getting this question a lot. Uh, a lot of people they can't get Shamans. It's so expensive. It's so ridiculous uh, on TCGO and in real life. Uh, they're just so hard to come by. Uh, how to get them is really simple. Uh, you can I, I say they're hard to come by, but then I say they're simple. Uh, the best way to get your shamans is to go on to eBay, uh, buy 100 Pokemon TCG online code cards. You can probably get away with 50. You go on there, you buy 50 code cards. Uh, you'll probably be paying around. 15 to 18 dollars uh, for those code cards and the seller will ship you the code cards or email you the codes you'll put them into TCG online uh, and then offer up a trade I'm not sure what shaman is trading at now it's probably around 35 to 40 regular packs or like 20 roaring skies uh, but yeah you put up a public trade for one shaman EX in exchange for 35 to 40 packs uh, and you see if someone takes it and you keep putting it up until someone takes it and then you're going to get your Shaman EX online. Um, that's the simplest way to do it. Uh, if you don't have that money to spend on TCG online code cards, and I definitely understand if you don't, there are ways to uh, get draw support and to run decks without Shaman, but they are slower. Uh, you could run stuff like a 4-4 and Sycamore line. I really don't like Professor Birch. I think it's a bad card. Uh, what does it draw you on average? Like 5.5 cards? Um, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's really not good. It's really not good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the amount of... I'd play Shauna over Professor Birch to be honest because you um, is I I just think Birch the, the option of just drawing four cards off of your primary draw supporter uh, is is not good at all uh, especially putting that in the hands of a coin flip it's N is just such a superior option uh, there's so many different uh, ways for N to work than there are for uh, Professor Birch to work. So I definitely go with 
a thicker count of uh, stuff like Professor Sycamore, stuff like N, maybe even run some Misty's Determination if you want to dig some more, up your counts of Trainer's Mail, maybe throw in some Acro Bike if you're really having trouble hitting those, uh, hitting those cards that you need. So there are ways to build decks without Shaman. Uh, another option is Octillery. Uh, the best way to get your Octillaries, I believe, is to go and either buy or buy online. Um, stuff like you can get a Xerneas, the shiny Xerneas EX tin code gives you a playable deck uh, that gives you some really nice cards. You get two copies of the Rainbow Force uh, Xerneas for Rainbow Road. You get two copies of the shiny Xerneas EX if you want to build a fairy deck with that. Uh, you can do that uh, Plus they look really cool. You get one copy of the premonition Gallade, a very nice ability going to be less used now because uh, Maxi's hidden ball trick plus battle compressor That's not really going to be working, but you do get a 2-2 Remoraid Octillery line uh, Which is very nice because Octilleries can be hard to come by on TCGO I think there may be like three packs each per hollow uh, and they're very hard to get on TCG online. So if you go online and you purchase, I think maybe it's like two bucks or something for this Xerneas tin code, you can get your two Octillery, you can get your 2-2 line of Remoraid and Octillery. That's good for any deck that you can't run Shaman in uh, for whatever reason. And it, you also get some really important trainers as well. You get a couple copies of uh, Professor Burt, some Wally, some Skyfield, some great trainers. You got Experience Share, Fighting Fury Belt, and Floatstone. Uh, trainers that are very playable and hard to come by in the uh, petite Pokemon TCG. Uh, and you also get some Hollow Energies. I believe you come. it comes with six uh, sort of slightly hollow fairy energies, which are pretty cool. Uh, so stuff like this, the Xerneas EX tin code just doesn't doesn't just give you one shiny Xerneas EX. It gives you this very good deck. Um, I wouldn't play it as such in the uh, in the TCG online, but the cards it gives you, I believe they are trade locked, but they are still very good very good cards for you to play uh, and just spice up your decks. Uh, so there we go, there's what I think you guys can do, what you want to play in the next format. There's really not a lot of stall decks coming up in the next format, or item lock decks, but I'm sure because uh, Seismitoad and Trevenant both rotate. Uh, but Trevenant, now that Night March is gone, Trevenant and Night March kind of kill each other, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, uh, there's really, I think... Stuff like we saw that went when it worlds Mega Audino, I don't think that's going to be very good in the next format. The only reason being, uh, it had a great, it was perfectly tailored to the world's meta. Shintaro Ito just read that perfectly, and uh, he was able to figure everything out and figure that out what a good play Mega Audino would be. But really, nothing else is going to be giving you that uh, that type of meta in the 2016-17 standard rotation. Uh, of course, right now we only have, uh, what do we have? We have Primal Clash on, so we have all the XY sets, XY5 through XY11. So you've only got about six, seven sets in there. Uh, yeah, so the meta will not take, will met, the meta won't solidify until right before the next Worlds. Uh, but really decks like this are they're going to be running uh, running the meta until new cards get announced those GX cards We'll see what those do uh, Yeah, and that's going to be very interesting if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below Thank you guys for watching be sure to like and subscribe and stick around for more videos